Welcome to another episode of Wooly Goodness here at the Brooklyn Tweed offices. My name is Kel, my pronouns are she and her, and today I am here with... Stephanie, I'm the yarn production director here at Brooklyn Tweed. My pronouns are she and her also. And I am so happy to talk to you today, Kel. Excellent, thank you for appearing <laughs> as our special guest today. I know it can be a little unnerving to sit in front of a camera, but there's Kenny right there behind the camera. Hello, Kenny. And you know, we're just sitting around the office chatting. Chatting about things we really love, like yarn, wool, knitting, people. All of these things, these recipes. Things. Exactly, food, food, you name it. Indeed, all of these things are good. So what, what are you knitting on there at the moment? Um, this is a sweater for my daughter-in-law, um, whose birthday is coming up. And um, I'm using Dapple, which is our cotton wool uh, blend, which I just love how it feels. Um, she asked me one time, uh, where would I buy a, why, where would I go to look for a sweater if I was buying a sweater? And I sort of answered, you mean instead of making it myself? Right. And she said, oh, that would be great. <laughs> so, oh, you just you just stepped right into that. I did, trap. and you know there is that boyfriend curse thing, and 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 she and my son were not yet married at the oh. time, and I was like, I don't know, but um, I said to her, this is not a short term thing. This is like the knitting has to work for both of us, and so I turned her on to Ravelry. And she went in and started, you know, she had no trouble mastering how to sort and filter and came nice. up with a nice list of sweaters that, that then I could choose. So this is called Savage Heart. Um, I believe Amy Christoffers is the designer. Okay. And it's just a very um, lovely, simple cardigan that has some features. You knit it from cuff to center. Oh, very nice. In two pieces and then join them um, up the back. And then it just is a very kind of casual, soft um, sweater. So nice. I'm on schedule for getting it done by her birthday. Uh, Excellent. And so I've just started the second half. So, so are you a project planner? Do you, do you plan your projects? Are you knitting on, on schedules frequently? You know, it's really interesting. Um, knitting is my hobby, and um, I work you know, in this industry as well, but I feel like it's important that I enjoy it. So when I feel like things are going really well, I am sort of have a plan, like thinking ahead. What's coming up, and what do I want to knit for? I made a vest for my son for Christmas this year, and I knew it in September, so it wasn't like a thing I decided on December 1st. Oh yeah, I wanna. So I try to be mindful and, and plan ahead. At the same time, it's fun to be spontaneous with your knitting as well. That's true. And sometimes you're just like, I wanna cast on a new project right now. We, we have that problem a lot around here, especially when we are we are getting in new yarns, planning new yarns. Well, influenced by our peers is a big thing. Indeed. Or a collection will come out and I'll be like, I want to knit that. We all want to knit that. And yes. then I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> how many other things do you have going on right now? Or um, So what are you working on? I am working on a canvas sweater, mm. which was in our Holiday 21 collection. Very excited about this. Um, actually knitting this as a sample for us. Uh, so I am also knitting on a schedule at the moment. Um, I knit this sweater. You did knit it. Also you, for you a sample. You knit yours in tones, tones, which was gorgeous. And I was a little tardy, so I knocked it out pretty fast. But I love that pattern. It is a gorgeous pattern. I, I love the cable panels. I love the texture. Um, the beginning was a little challenging because there's a lot going on. Yes. But once once you get through the beginning of getting the raglan set up and starting your pattern and getting getting everything done, then it's yeah, then it's very intuitive. So I felt like once I got past that starting where there's the shaping, yes. and I could start to see uh, what was happening, it just everything fell into place, and it was just a, such a fun knit and just the kind of sweater I like to wear. Um, cables texture. 
Yes. Are you are you keeping your sample? Uh, yes, it's at home right now. Excellent. I too will be keeping my sample because I am <laughs> enjoying this. Um, yes. So. I know it's been really fun knitting knitting samples, and then yeah, I, t I tend to keep mine. We've been knitting a lot of samples around the office here because um, we work. So we do samples for all of our patterns so that we can photograph them. We try to do them in different yarns. Uh, we work with some wonderful sample knitters uh, who we compensate for their work. Um, but then we've also been doing samples around the office because we're all knitting anyway. So, hey, if we can knit our samples right here, then they're right here. They're done. If we have questions, we can just talk to the pattern development team. Um, so that's been really great. Um, but we have the option of getting paid for our sample or we can keep our sample. Um, so, yes, I've been acquiring a lot of hats over the last year, <laughs> which has been a lot of fun because I'm like, I can knit a hat. I, you know, that's... This is, I think, the first sweater sample I've knit. So that's been, I'm like, I have to stay on schedule. Um, but hats, I can be like, oh, okay, no problem. I can not get a hat. Hats are so great So that's that been way. fun. Yeah. So. So, so Kel, I'm always interested in people's knitting history. Ooh, like, knitting what, history. How did you begin? That, that is an excellent question. Yes, and I'm going to ask that back to you because I know you come from a very crafty family and have been steeped in making... <laughs> Uh, so we didn't really have any knitters in my family, actually. My, uh, my mom sewed, my aunt sewed, I sewed, my brother sewed. My brother's actually a fantastic quilter. Mm. Um, he has more patience than, than I do. Um, and I had kind of taught myself, um, cause my background was costume design. That's what I went to school for. And so you acquire lots of various textile related mm -hmm. skills as you're doing that. So I kind of taught myself how to knit, not particularly well. Um, and then as many people who went to art school do, I wound up working in IT. <laughs> and I used to drive to work uh, back when I lived in DC and I would pass this yarn store on the way to work every day. And I was like, that place looks really cool. Maybe I'll go in there someday and see what it's about. And so one day I went in and I was like, wow, this is super fancy. And there was all this yarn and colors and it was amazing. And I was like, you know, kind of overwhelmed. And I went and sort of, I picked up a knitting book that looked appealing. Um, and I like sat in the corner and I looked, looked through it. And I was like, oh, look at all this <laughs> knowledge. And so I bought the book and I went home and I read the book and then I went back a couple days later and like asked some questions because now I had a little bit of knowledge and started touching all the yarn and uh, that's where it really started. So that would have been like 2003, I think, um, somewhere around there. And um, once I knew what I was doing and I was like, oh, I get this now. I get why working with these these slippery needles was difficult with slippery yarn and now I'm working with wool instead of acrylic and it's got elasticity and it's easier to knit with and now I'm trying different kinds of needles and there's this whole community of people who are also into this thing and I got hooked. I got hooked. I um, Did that become your favorite yarn shop then? I mean, did, did it draw you in so that you wanted to be there a lot? Well, I wound up working there because they were like, well, if you're going to be here all the time organizing <laughs> the shelves, we might as well pay you. So <laughs> I wound up working there and then um, started teaching and found out that I loved that. I love to teach people to knit. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it just kind of went on from there. Then I wound up working at a different yarn shop that uh, one of my friends who I met through the first yarn shop wound up opening. And that yarn shop, uh, Fiber Space in Virginia, was one of the original nine Brooklyn Tweed flagship stores. So that's how I met Jared. And we had Shelter at the big release in 2010, Brooklyn Tweed's first yarn. And then so through convoluted methods, that's how I wound up sitting in this office um, what a journey, Kel. It, it was all because I saw that yarn store as I was driving to work. I was like, wow, that looks neat. Maybe I'll go in there one day. 
And so that, yeah, it has, it has been a, a journey indeed. What about you? So you, I know that your mom sewed beautifully yeah. and you grew up around making. And well, that, yeah, that's true. Um, I think, so my mother gave me a gift in that she made it possible for me to try everything, like embroidery, sewing. I think I made my first dress when I was 11 years old wow. that I wore to school. You know the you know the raglan elastic all the way around sort of peasant thing. Oh I no. I still remember it. Uh loved that dress with my knee socks and my tennis shoes. Oh, it was excellent. fabulous. Throw a pair of shorts on and you can do the monkey bars no problem. So, uh my mom, I think it was a combination of her wanting to keep me occupied but also she got such pleasure out of making things um, and she shared that with me. So I remember she taught me to knit when I was about six. I think I made a very little green garter stitch um, rectangle. And the thing that's funny is that my mom knew how to knit and she always talked about how she tried to be a knitter but it just never stuck with her. So she would buy yarn to start something for my brother, who was older than I was, and then pretty soon it was something for me because he'd outgrown it and still wasn't done. And for that project, I remember finally when I was in college, I said, can I have this yarn? Because you clearly haven't used it in 10 years. So, <laughs> nice. um, so yeah, my mom taught me to knit and sew and all these other things. And I sewed for many, many years. And I would pick up knitting and crochet and things when I needed to make something. So often I was making gifts and things at the holidays. Um, and then I remember in college, I picked up that old yarn that had been hanging around and I made a vest that had cables. I didn't do gauge, I didn't get it. It was just like, I couldn't think about it. But the vest actually worked somehow, I the pattern worked for the yarn. So that was the first garment. And then um, fast forward some years and um, I am I have a, a little boy and I, I just believe that children need to be wearing hand knitted things, this, hats and this sweaters. This is a fact. <laughs> babies, babies need hand knits. For me to be the mother that I thought I could be, he needed to wear hand knits. And so that really is what started me knitting every single day. Um, you know, I was uh, a little overwhelmed with having a child. Like, you know, it's a new thing, there's no manual. I was gonna say, you're, you're have, you have small children <laughs> and you're knitting every day. And you're it was kind of hero. that thing for me. And once, um, once we established that the children went to bed at eight o'clock at night, then that was, you know, the clock started ticking for me, like a couple hours. And you get your knitting solid. time in? Yeah. Oh, I'll see but it. I was very Thanks. solitary. I didn't know other knitters. I. Um, there was maybe a yarn shop uh, in town. Um, I just, you know, I was on my own, uh, had some reference books, and, um, and then the internet came along, and all of a sudden there were a lot of resources and discussions, and, you know, you could really expand your horizons in terms of hearing about different things. Um, so I continued to knit, and then, like you, I discovered that there was a yarn shop like a mile and a half from my house and I started going there um, fairly regularly and uh, the shop owner finally said to me, do you want a job? And I was like, I don't know, you know, I mean, I had a, I was, I had a lot of things that I was doing, but I thought, well, shucks, if I don't take this, somebody else is going to do it. And that was in the early 2000s also when Portland experienced just an explosion of shops. Um, so it was shops. very close to my home and I could work the hours that I needed to work and um, I started teaching as well and I just loved it. I loved being around the yarn. Um, I loved talking to other knitters. I loved teaching people. Um, it was just, it, it just is such a... And I've characterized it for people, you know, knitting can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. That is true, yeah. If it, you want something simple, you can find it. If you want something that's going to challenge you a little bit, um, you can also do that. And you can do them at the same time, you know. Yes. So that's sort of my uh, story. And just to kind of round it out, I 
still like to sew and make things and I like to quilt and stuff, but um, knitting is very portable. So I find that that's, that's really the, I can't lug my sewing machine around with me uh, the way I can take my knitting. Yes. Yeah, I love that about knitting. Cause yeah, when you're sewing, you're like, oh, I have to wash my fabric. I have to press my fabric. I need to get my pattern ready. I've got to cut my pattern pieces out. I've got to cut my fabric. Well, now I've used up all my time and now I have to put everything all away again. And then yes. So yeah, but you're knitting, you're like, oh, I've got five minutes before I need to go do this thing. Let me, let me knit a row which is great, which is why I love it. Cause. You can make some progress. You know, have you've heard of the people that knit at stop signs, like, I'm gonna knit this sock, but I'm only gonna do it when I'm at, you know, a stop. see how long it takes me to knit a sock when I'm in traffic and I can't I, go anywhere. I may have been a <laughs> traffic knitter back when I was commuting in the DC area and had to drive to work and there were some horrible, horrible traffic days. So there may have been some, some in-car knitting going on. For sure. Yeah, but um, yeah, so yeah, those those early early 2000s knitting like resurgence days were were kind of wild because exactly like you said, we went from kind of having to like learn these things on our own and you know, maybe the only patterns that you saw were the ones that were in a, you know, a yarn brand book in the, in the Joann's fabrics or whatever. And that was it. And that you were like, oh, well, I guess, you know, I have to pick from this. And then we started having knit bloggers, but you had to be able to find them on the internet. And then it just kind of kept growing. And then Ravelry came along and all of a sudden it was like, bam, instant community. But yeah, ha walking into that yarn shop and seeing people interacting and like being part of that community. So you have somebody to turn to and go, does this look right? How do I do this? Which color do you think is, should I pick? And yeah, having that community was like so, so huge. And that's why I got hooked. Cause I was like, this is so much fun. There's this energy, everybody's really into this thing. So yeah, that's, that's why it kept me part of it. Um, yeah, and then and then it was exciting to see other people come and get into it and and learn and be uh, just get hooked as well and and seeing people be you know kind of fearless about it was really cool um, when I first started teaching pe other people to knit and seeing people be like oh I'm totally gonna learn how to do cables because I want to and not thinking that oh this is hard because it looks complicated just be like oh I'm gonna figure this thing out. Um, so yeah, just like you say, it can be as, can be as easy or as complicated as you like. So tell us about your knitting history. How did you get into knitting? What kind of projects do you love? Do you love the complicated? Do you love the simple? Are you an on schedule knitter? Are you a planner? Are you a spontaneous knitter like me? And you just keep starting projects and not finishing them because you go on to the next thing. Tell us in the comments below and we will talk about it more in another episode. So thanks so much, and we will see you next time.